All right. Welcome, welcome to our weekly New Gambia, uh, New Gambia Media Platform talk show. Today is December 17, 2023. So today we're going to be talking about illegal immigration, the back way. And we're also going to talk about the continuous demolition in the West Coast area and KMC. Uh, we are lucky to have our guest here, uh, Mustafa Mane, uh, currently located in Seattle. But um, he's going to be giving us some um, background of this illegal immigration and uh, what are the what are what are related to to it and how how we can control this as a nation. And we also have another topic, which is the continuous demolition that we have to look at. So I have my co-host Sam Sise. Sam, welcome. And I'm farmer, of course, is off camera. Farmer, thank you. Welcome to Mona. And of course, our guest, Mustafa Minti, Mustafa Mane, sorry, an investigate, investigative journalist. Mustafa, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Yeah. So, Mustafa, we definitely see a lot of people dying in the sea. And people are complaining, you know, people are concerned. Why is this an issue? Uh, can you give us an insight? All right, thank you so much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Like you said, I'm Mustafa Mane. I think, like, I will start to say that migration is, is a right. Um, is, is a right that everybody has because we have right to travel. But using a right channel is what is important. So what happens is in, in the Gambia, migration is a little back way. It's not something new. Even though this migration or back way is known to be like, popular in an area that are not like fortunate enough to have the social amenities, or they are not, or, or I will say they are not able to have access to to what the people in Congo have. But recently, we have seen a shift in that. Like the trend have been more within the coastal communities, and this really um, says something important. That is, <clears throat> there is a pressure within the coastal communities. So for the past seven years, these coastal communities have been battling with 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 challenges when it comes to overfishing, with challenges when it comes to sand mining, with challenges when it when it comes to um, um, accessing or, or or getting the best out of what we call sustainable um, um, tourism or or ecotourism, especially carbon, which is known to be a very good story. But this coming of um, of of um, these fish mill factories or these these industrial trawlers have put too much pressure on these people. So now the youth who are engaged or were engaged in their meaningful business, are out of job. And if you talk to them, the mentality is, we have to go there and struggle. They simply mean, these Europeans came to Africa to overseas. And now we are out of job, and we have to go and struggle with them in their country. And we have to use the same boat. This is the mentality that, or these are the things that they keep saying. <laughs> and, and and for me, it it sound it sound more genuine because the people who are taking all their jobs are the Europeans. I'm like and industrial products and also the tennis industrial. So, so to go back to this, there is a huge concern that governments will address. That is, what is the root cause? So the root cause is they use are left jobless, and they have to do anything to make sure they get a living. Uh, Mr. Mr. Sawane, we live in a, in a community where you, since since as a kid, your parents will take care of you until you are thirty. That is painful to live with, and there are so many youths who are who are living with great pain, but they never speak about it. So when they see opportunity, they will capitalize on it, and this is where this so-called human traffic has come in. Talking or or, or, or discussing with this men who are disparate because they cannot have any fish to use their boats and might like and transport these people. And the worst part is they don't tell them anything good. M my younger brother, the same father, used this way twice. Most of the time, four people a minimum die in their boat. So the reason boat pattern is now known to be to be a port like like a point of departure for for this backway use. 
because carton is very close to Senegal. So even when carton does, doesn't have the boat, but the boats that are coming from Senegal, they will like they will stop in carton and uh, <clears throat> sorry and pick they pick this use. So the problem is that um, one, I don't blame the youth for taking this journey, personal, and I wouldn't blame them because they are desperate, they have no hope, they are persuaded, and they are pushed to do it. But the people who should stop them is the government. Katong has an, has an immigration point. Katong has a Navy point. It's very easy to stop this smuggling in Katong. But through my findings, I can tell you for free, <laughs> the boat that was carrying about 200 plus people, that the boat that believed to be captured and all of them died, 27 from Katong and 41 from, from Jambu, the Navy in Katong were aware of it. They were fully aware of the boat. And in fact, according to my source, the Navy have the correct number. So now where's the problem? They give them money. Imagine Carton, three soldiers were in that boat. Three soldiers who left their gun, packed their uniform, and entered that boat. Imagine if soldiers who are supposed to stop these people from going are the ones using this back way. Then we have a problem as a country. So the problem is there is lack of commitment from the government. Because the youth are disappearing. I, I, I said it like, Seven years ago, I keep telling people, if we change the government, we will not have what is happening. The government will create a job for you. But it's very sad to realize that that government neglected the youth more than even the previous government. So, so to address the back way, it's not to go there to talk to people not to go. It's to give them meaningful. If I say meaningful livelihood, I mean a livelihood that is going to sustain them. Paying people 6000 paying people 7000 paying people 8000 will not stop this back way. Imagine civil servants are also going. Leaving, like, cost is expensive in the Gambia. Just a mere egg, one egg is $15 in the Gambia now. $15. A cup of sugar goes for $20. Where are we heading to? Your salary is $8,000. Grade 7, like, grade 7, a teacher salary, sometimes they go home with, like, $5,000. A teacher. And you have to pay for your bills. You have to pay for transport and to go to work. This is a problem. And those are the people who are taking this journey. So our, our problem is first to address the root cause. And that is the root cause is economic. Gambia migration is now based on economic most of the time. And we have to address that economic issue. I said it, if Gambia takes really like if if we focus more on our on our tourism, we focus more on our fisheries. Most of the youth will not go. But Gambia is blessed. Our, our coastline is just eight, like like it's just eighty kilometers. That's not much. Our population is, is about two million. That is not much. But how how we still cannot protect the living that we have? The government, when you talk, they said we bring employment. We can employment. We bring fish mill factories. And fish mill factories in the Gambia destroy more tourism businesses, and even destroy businesses. So because most of the youth that are engaged in Carton, most of the youth that embark on this bar, one are either fishermen, most of them are fishermen, and all they are engaged in tourism. But they cannot do tourism anymore. Because you cannot bring tourists tourist in an area that is stinking. Tourists go to Africa or to Gambia to enjoy their holiday, but not to be in a place that stinks. Mm. They prefer going to Senegambia. So now, look at this. Gunju have the higher number, Tartong, Gunju, Sanya. And imagine, and let's talk about this, they, come in, they all have the same problem. So the problem is, let's address the root cause. And the root cause is, the youths are, on, like, are not employed fully or are underpaid. And these are issues that are causing migration. And finally, I will say the family pressure. Most of the youths, when this disaster happened, the, what they would say is, Makalamura, Amafoni. But when they, when they, and because I, I will take this as a sample in Kato, it's very sad. We have a group here. We have a committee group here that has about 1,000 members. Because I, 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 I run a community, new, like a community online newspaper called Kato Weekly News. And we also have a, we have a WhatsApp group that has a lot of people. 
when the first boat went and and reached safely, people are people people were jubilating, celebrating. You you imagine people are celebrating. When that happened, I said it's going to happen again because this is going to send motivation. People are going to send money back home for people to go. And less than one week, another boat left. Nobody nobody know where they are. And we said, okay, why not now we we put a stop because it's been two weeks. We don't know where these people are, and there's high chance that they all die. But people even come to the group to attack people. To attack, just to say we have to stop this because you are you are in Europe, you don't want development, you don't want the betterness for the other people. You are wicked. And the boat left, and again, people die in that boat. So now what happened is those that are celebrating, they all say, Mark Alam, we don't know. And believe me, these agents are people who are living within our communities. These are our own family members. These are our own daughters. But because we live in a community mm -hmm. that if it affects you, then it's okay. But if it doesn't affect you, this is going to be done. That's it. That's it. Believe me, that's it is going to kill people. And the worst part is there are a lot of families who are still, who still doubt that for two months now it didn't man for For two months. After not hearing from far them. Back. After not hearing from them. And I can tell you two weeks, two weeks they will all die. Two weeks. They cannot be in the water for two weeks, survive for two weeks. I talk with, with survivors who are in Italy, sorry, who are, who are in Spain. You know what they told me? They said after a few days, the food is finished. Do you know what they used to do? They drink salt water and that destroy their body. Of course. Salt water. And what happens is if you die on board, imagine these people, they will not even, even, even be able to check all your vital signs. But if you stop moving, maybe, maybe you collapse. They will just throw you in the water. They throw you in the water. Yes. They don't, they don't keep them in, in the boat. And some people even go, go crazy because maybe they have seen something that they have never seen before in their life. And they will say the words, sometimes their boat engineer will not be working. And if you start talking like that, they will say, Bualam. And they will throw you. And, 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 and if they, they will. And that's really caused a lot. I talk with survivors and I talk with people who are, who are witness of this. It's very, very sad. A, a small community like Carton, we are talking about 27 people. A small community like that, where everybody is related. Eight of my my first cousins were in that boat. I I I, I spoke to my uncle, and he kept crying because what he said is didn't only mean for your cabinet attack. In Hamoda Malata, they want to end poverty. They don't want to be living it us for like thirty years now, and I'm giving them everything. There is no work in the Gambia that they can do. Even the little work that they can do, they cannot come home with 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 six thousand. Imagine going to Sarakona every day from from Kato. You spend nothing less than 150 every day if, if you want to reach us. Because from Brickhammer to Serigona, it's 50 houses. And you are from Carton, you have to go to Gunjur, you have to go to Carton. So at least, let's say $150 every, every day. That's a lot. And now reduce that from, from, from your 6000 You end up having less than 1500 mm -hmm. And you've seen your fellow youths who went successful and they start building houses. There is a problem. So the, the problem needs to be addressed. That is, the government, if they cannot provide these people with jobs, but they should not destroy their job, especially already existing jobs. That is tourism. We can, we can live with tourism even without government support. Because cartoon is black. Cartoon has a flat beach. We can live with peace even without government support. We call them Bottom swollen, even though bottom swollen have been destroyed by 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 experts because it destroyed the biodiversity. But we have people who are doing that before and they were having a lot of fish. Now they cannot do that anymore. These artisanal fishing vessels, the serrators, are no more fishing. It's not fishing is not just a livelihood for them, but is a, like is a, is an identity. Right, right, right. And they love it and then they. They are part yes. of it. Like it's part of their yes. history. They are, but now look, look at them. They are all going because in, in Qatar, most of these areas don't send their kids to school. So imagine you are now thirty-five. You, you cannot go to school anymore in the Gambia. That's that's the belief that we have. 
So the, the one thing that you need to do is what? Pay them or make a board and they can be the captain to take people to, to Spain. And that's what is happening. That is exactly what is happening. So so this this is so I'm I'm glad that you have put this issue out and um, people are talking about it. It's important for Gambians to have holistic conversation and not towards this issue because it needs to be stopped. A lot of youth have careers in this water. I cried when I think about it because like I have family members in that boat. I have close, I mean childhood yeah, friends in that boat. So we have to do that now. Yeah, and that has to be that have to be addressed. Yeah. Um, because if that is not addressed, okay. that is going to give us a problem. Right. So thank you so much for that. Um I think some of the things that you mentioned probably would um would definitely warrant a question, a, a few questions perhaps from um my co-host. But I will start with this one, um, uh, Mr. Pa. The boat that they use to go, are those the ones with the plastic ones or the regular fishing boats that are made made out of the uh, out of the wood, um, or plywood or something? Um, the boats that they use are regular fishing boats that are made out of out of um um, um out of um, a wood. I would say this is the exact boat that people use to go. If you go to Tanya, you go to Pan on the kind of boat that you see is the exact boat that they use. Is that is this boat different from the one that they use when they go to Libya and other places? The boat that they use in Libya is plastic one. It's like more of like a balloon boat that you need to fill with air and then you go. But these ones are just just um um just wooden boats. That that imagine if you start leaving because someone told me if you start leaving before even you finish Senegal. You will the, the boat is it, almost full with water, so so some people have to be there to remove the water, just like normally what they do when they go fishing. Okay, so this boat are even on insecure compared to the other boats that they use in Libya area. Libya boat for me are more secure than the others. Oh my goodness! So the notion is that these boats they are so big, perhaps might be even more safe, but in in the in the in the sense it is not even true. That these boats are even safe. I would say most boats are not big as people think. These boats are, are sizable boats that are used for fishing. Yep. They are they, they are they are boats that are very unsafe. And these are most of them, these are old boats. And in fact, if they told my that um, we are going to give you a new boat, we, are, we made a new boat, it's a lie because that's what happened. My my younger brother case is like that. They promised them that if it's a new one, this is what he told me when he returned. But in reality, when they go, and, and, and this is what we call a journey of no return. After spending all this money, if you reach the boat, you don't, you don't go back. This is when they say, is it a rest in peace? Or, no, they, they said rest in peace or rest in health. They, they, there is a time that they call, meaning they don't fear that. Let, let it happen when it has to happen. These are the people who, who are in that boat. That's what they think and yes. that's what they say. Yes. Yeah. So they knew the risk. They knew. Before even they started, they say if we don't need mom fire and father body from Sia and blood, we have to die, no matter what. Is it here or in the sea? So they know about they were sensitized, they know the risk, but they still made a choice. They know everything. Remember, this this boats are not covered. Even they are, this is an open boat. It's not covered. They know everything. They know the danger. They, and, and most of these are people who have never even entered the sea in their life. Women are much more protected. So what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you think, so what do you think? Are they been brainwashed? Uh, because this kind of is they're not like suffering back home as 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 we might think. Nobody, I mean, like uh, we didn't see people dying of hunger. In the Gambia, so why would somebody choose that? Is this is this the notion of brainwash, or is it the notion of uh, competition, or uh, pressure among families, or I mean, because this look like it's in you know it's individually individualized. I mean, I've been in Gambia, but I've, I haven't seen anybody who died of hunger. I was there last year. Um, because if you're so hungry or you don't have anything to wear or anything like that, just if you go out outside and back, you would see, you will get something. So 
it's not like you know people are dying. So why would you choose another a chance of dying in the sea over that? That's what I don't understand. Is it, that's what I'm saying? Is it a is it a pressure from the family or the society, or is it um like people are mentally ill, or is it um it has to be something. This all cannot be hamo, hamo, hamo. You have more so though. That fifty thousand, yeah. if you put that in the market, you know, and then you go and buy goods and and and, and recycle them, you can. I'm pretty sure you will be able to maintain a good living. I mean, at least, even without government jar. Yeah. yeah. So the the issue is um, peer peer influence is one of it, and um, and also family pressure is, is also part of it. But also believing in the notion that I cannot make it in the Gambia is one of it, and also doing business in the Gambia. I when I returned from Cyprus, I could have stayed in Cyprus because when my scholarship ended, I could not be applied. I was not able to pay. Many people will move to the other side of Cyprus and apply asylum, and then I think I have every reason then to apply for asylum because that that's the high chance that I will live in the asylum. But the issue is I, I returned back home because I believe in myself and I believe that I can make it in the Gambia. But you will not believe returning to the Gambia. I was seen as a failure. I was seen as someone who is mad. Some some will even publicly say to me that yes, send in and yeah, I deport. And that was not true. I was having a, a two year residential permit. But the fact is that even when I when I when I engage in business, well in nothing will be a semester long, you know, nothing will because I start with selling someone and close. But you are being in the gangola, you still have fun over. And and we live in a society that is very difficult to to say coming yaka ya some me me jola ni yenga silapandola. You know, and secondly, Gambians, are, 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 well, I, I, won't, I won't generalize, but most of the time, people back home don't empower their very own people. I was running a shop, then, then I started a shop, but they prefer going to another shop to buy than my shop. That is a society, that, that's a society where we live. And imagine, coupled with all those challenges, you have a family issue, like your, 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 your family, just your, your neighbor, son or daughter, is in Europe and every day if I'm sorry for the man we are not equal near charm without a char. It's a long go my long go so on. So meaning if you had a fry <laughs> or at least a smell of meat or <laughs> or fish, you know that at least there's a semester in that oh that's the notion awesome that we have. And also I keep telling people, you know I think uh, why is it that we take fancy photos behind Ferraris or behind Teslas and uh, and, and, and and put on social media. Even this semester going for holiday influence a lot of people. People don't know the word. Even this December semesters influence a lot of people. You went, you went, and you were there with with your boys, and you went to Europe one year, two year. You went for semester, and you start driving very expensive cars. In fact, you start building story houses, and these people don't know how you get their money, and they don't tell them the truth. Also, Europe is not as the way they think. Europe is worse. America, like, if you really talk to them, the reality, they will say, say not. To a woman, they are saying Now, when they are not going to see you. So, 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 even, like, the smugglers have, have the, the smugglers' job is very, very easy. It's super easy. Because now, these people have this notion that they cannot make it in Africa. They can only make it in Europe. And they have this notion that like and they have this notion that, that that's something that's something, something new that's something new that you know that I, you I, know I don't know about my co-host but this is something new for me that 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 terminology that you use that's the first time I had that but <laughs> yes, that's that, this is something that this is this is a very common this is a very common common terminology back home like see, people say it a lot and, and, and imagine if it's even, even during Tobaski, like, if it's for the study, but that would have been a semester of school. And, and, and to, some, to some extent, this is true. So, so do you think, do you so, think um, semesters themselves, us, are we, because we, we cannot take ourselves out of this, are we also responsible for this problem? Yes. Yes. Because in yeah. like more from Nita, the Idiwan in the sign, Tabun Colomba, a Mundo Gula, Kurigella Babu, I bunya the law. Those are things that you saw. Like in the field, and what most of the things in the new fight example from even when the time I went to get married, they started asking, they start question about my job. 
even even my friends start questioning about it. That's what they said. Without knowing, co, even like these are things me alone. It's going to force you to work instead of sitting because it, it's only you. But if you have someone else, it's going to force you to go and work. So, so, so it's a problem. It, it, like I, I say, even if a Gambian, like if I'm living in Gambia and I compete, I'm more food with a semester. There is 99.9 percent that oh, semester about Muslim sort of. Even if the girl want to marry to me, and a family back for surprise, and that's 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 true. So, so, so technically. Is our community, our society. This is um yes. yeah because we cannot you know we need to pinpoint the problem here. Is pressure mm -hmm. from our superior, our society mm -hmm. the way they look at things the way brain there's a brainwashing going on, the same way, the same way that we are looked as inferior to the white people, mm -hmm. is the same thing. Very true. Very true. Is going on here. That we think that when you come and make it. And do you know, somebody told me here when I came to U.S., he told me, you Africans are coming here because you think here, we have it here. If we, if you guys all come here, we hand over this place to you and we go back to Africa. Ten years later, you will live here again and mm -hmm. come over there to migrate. Because you know what? You will destroy everything that is here already built and we will be there from where you came from, we will build it, and you're gonna come again twenty years later to come and hustle over there. So the mm -hmm. person told me he's from the Nation of Islam. He told me it is not the problem where you are. You where Africa Africa has everything. It's you guys. It's us. And then I totally believe that because. Those people with the brain and the way they are, they will make what they will make fortune out of what is in Africa. And Putin even said, Putin even said it. He said, "Africa can feed the whole world." All, these, all these leaders know knows what Africa has, but instead, we are saying "Afentaja," and "Jambe Drayeni," you know. But we are not looking around and then trying to create and trying to, we are so lazy, we want ready-made things. And I think the problem is us. I can, you can blame the government, not creating jobs, but people mm -hmm. abroad, like you and I and others, we can support our family in different ways. If, if at all this brain was and it's not happening and they can be creative and build the economy. In addition to the jobs, the little jobs that the government is creating, everything cannot be government's problem. I think it's the people. And I mm -hmm. will sit here and you know and allow my co-workers to come. Because based on what you're saying, it's a mentality, it's a, it's, it's, it's a psychology. Because if I can go with you to marry the woman and they pick me, even though the woman loves you and the family will pick me because of I am here, then we have a serious power. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Just because the, 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 the family would expect more from me. And even though you can take care of that woman and that woman loves you, then we have a serious problem. Our community we needs to awaken. Um, I will allow and, 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 and Sam to come in and then if they have to say anything. I know you are you are at work, you know, so. Yeah. Mpamara, you want to come in? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. And thank you, Mustafa, for joining us today. Very interesting discussion. Uh, Mustafa has a good experience in this, like an investigative journalism. He He's also from a community of Khartoum, which is more affected by this illegal migration. So I want to join you and Mustafa to remember this um, soul that we lost, this uh, children, our brothers and sisters that we love in, through this um, illegal migration. I know it's a desperation. I know it's a big concern for our country and something we need to do about it. And then Mustafa just said, we need to talk about the root causes. Of course, yes, the root causes are very, very important to think about. But now for the moment, I think we just all have to increase sensitization and ask our brothers to hold on for now, for at this point in time. Because you know what? When a life is lost, it's gone forever. You understand? I mean, these young people, <laughs> We're not going to have them anymore. They are gone forever. 
all right? The problem and the challenges that we are dealing with in Gambia, you know, obviously is not going to be um, resolved uh, within a short period of time, but at least we have our life, you know, we have our good health. When you have your life and your good health, anything can happen, all right? And it doesn't mean that, like you right, like you said, Sam, this, uh, uh, Sawane, these people are not very hungry at home. Some of them come from, you know, uh, I would not say a, health, a wealthy family, but at least, you know, they are able to afford something. You know, they they, they, they can afford their, uh, you know, daily meals. You know, they are not that, you know, uh, I, I don't know what to say, but actually they are not from a poor family that are struggling so much because yeah. at least they have some money in their hand that they can pay, you know, this journey. So that money, if we can hold on to it, it can feed a family, it can at least create something so that we come to a drawing uh, a level of understanding, you know, where we can address this issue. It is not only government, but it's also our communities need to be involved. All hands needs to be on deck. Of course, the greater part, why we're painting our fingers at the government is simply because the government has the responsibility to protect our citizens, to employ them, create opportunities so that people can stay in their country. No matter how that can be done, that's something that we need to talk about. But right now, we have been losing our young people. Within this last two years, Gunjur alone have lost over 50 um, you know, youths. At uh, Katong, 27 youths recently. And in the previous years, we don't know. Jambur, the same thing. Burfoot, of course, we are affected. You know, In fact, some boats live from Burfoot going to this area. But our casualty is not as big as compared to Katong and Gunjur and Jambur. All right? But it's a big concern. It is a big concern. Now those 100 kids that lost their life, we have 100 sisters that are not going to be married because those those boys could be a husband, they could be a father in future, they could be our community leaders, they could be entrepreneurs, they can be politicians, they can even be government civil servants. But because we lost them, all that is gone. You understand? So I think right now we just need to hold on for the time being and discourage our people to stop this illegal way while we come to our an agreement. And I think the government also need to declare a national day of mourning because this is very serious. Very, very serious. Yeah. We need to think about this. You know, Khartoum already did a chronic recitation. Uh, I've just watched it online the other week. You know, I mean, they are praying for these youths. You know, I mean, obviously the families are traumatized. You know, and everybody wants to get out of this situation. And the people of Combo are going to be even more affected. Because for one, our natural resources have been exploited and no benefits are coming to the people of Combo. All right? Now the land is almost gone. The, before we used to have plenty of land to cultivate rice fields, even uh, Coos Mill, um, Coos Farms. All of those lands are not there anymore because government are taking chunk of the land for tourism development. And then now Combocas are even scared to have a big land because they think someday the government is coming and get it from you. They started selling all those lands and now people don't have any job. You finish uh, school, you are not in employment, you don't have any skills. What do you do? This is one of some of the factors pushing young kids to go this journey because they have seen people who have taken the same route and they succeeded and what they are doing back home now. So everybody now wants to take up the opportunity, you know, and people are even saying, I would rather die on the journey than stay in the country. If you hear that statement from the young people, then Donna there is very desperate and something needs to be done. And then government also need to step up and then take up, um, you know, right ways. And we have also seen some of these people are being returned back, the returnees. What are government doing for them? You know? So it's a whole lot of things. But I think right now, the best thing to do is to hold on for the time being. That's the immediate action we can do, sensitization and ask people to hold on. Because these people are coming from our communities. The agents are from our communities. The beaches they are used are being patrolled by government agencies like the security forces. So somewhere, somebody somewhere knows how this thing is being planned and we know we can stop it. So that's what we need to do right now until we all come back to our senses and then come with a solution. Because something has to be done. You know, this time of the year, it's very cold in the water. You know, right now it's very cold. Coming to Europe is very cold. These people only come one or two sets with maybe one jacket. And then they, some of them are saying, um, when you come towards Europe around Christmas time, 
that is the easiest day, easiest time to enter Europe because they say because the white people are all busy preparing for Christmas. Maybe they are uh, some of their guard posts are empty, you know, because everybody is going for Christmas. You know, this is the opportunity they use. The death tolls are usually very high between November and December because that's when they say people are so busy with Christmas celebration, so there is nobody to watch them. You know, they can easily enter Europe. So, um, Sawane. Um, it's very concerning. It's very alarming. We need to do something as soon as possible. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, Father. Yeah, Sam, um, your contribution towards this. Um, and if you have questions for Mustafa. Yeah, uh, thank you all. Thank you, uh, uh, Mustafa and uh, Sawani and Palmer that just spoke also about the same thing. But uh, thank you all for your your contributions and everything that you said really makes sense. Uh, uh, it makes sense to everyone that listens to this and I think it's going to benefit people. Uh, before I start, Mustafa was going to say something about women and I didn't catch that part. And, uh, it got a cut off because uh, when you were saying that, one, I was also trying to say something. So it overlapped and I didn't hear that. Can you say that part of that before I come in? You said some women are more protected. But that was all I heard about that. How? Yeah, so I, I will say that, but I will say it quickly because I have to leave. Oh, okay. And uh, maybe if you have a question, you can ask them and answer the question. Yep. So um, in the in the boat, what they do is they because uh, they put the women down and um, give them like what we call um, some some seed. So they have these uh, paradigm that we call in Madinka. Mm -hmm. um, and um and they will they will like cover them because these folks are open space. So that's why most of the time the casualty when it comes to women uh, women uh, they, they come really low uh, compared to the boys because the boys will be more exposed, you know. And that is that's what I I I want to say. So they they prepare a special place for uh for the women and the children. You know, sometimes like you have like two year like a two months old 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 babies in this yeah. boat because last yeah. time someone called me from Senegal. Uh, who are my friends? So this boat from Gunjur uh, went up to Morocco. They could not make it. So on their on their, on their return, they were able to um, to um, to stop in in a village called Kayar in in Senegal. So luckily, Kayar is a community that I've done a lot of um, investigations. So I have a lot of friends there who called me. Why I was even in the US? So I have to call the Gunjur people to go and uh, rescue. Um, um, yeah, but and uh, there are about three women who are with only two months old old babies. I couldn't hold my head. That was really, really hard much. Wow, wow. Well, I'm glad they cre create some shade for women and uh, protect them. That that was always a concern for me when I heard that women were also part of this. But anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you, and thank you for clarifying that. So the way I look at this is uh, uh, there is a part, several factors that come into play. Um, society has their own. Parents have their own, the government has their own share in this. I think uh, um, first things first, uh, we need to uh, come to a stop. You know, the government need to put something in place to really uh, monitor all of these from Sanyang all the way to Khartoum, to monitor that area to make sure they put enforcement in there that no boat leaves there, period. Stop it first while you stop it and go through the root cause analysis and uh, you know, I think we generally, if you talk to any Gambian, they're going to tell you what is the root cause. Well, the root cause is that youths don't have anything. They don't have any hope in the country. They believe that they're not going to make anything out of it. They can't make anything in Gambia, so they they believe that they need to travel and go overseas. So, so uh, as a result, uh, because the government is not providing them anything, so as a result, they all want to go. And, and also seeing from others, the few individuals that went to the bathway and made something. Uh, and uh, they don't look at the, the negative side of the ones that died. They look at the ones that uh, that made and then, uh, got it, got through, arrived at destination, able to get a job, or whatever they're doing. They do it. They're doing something that people are seeing the the benefits of what they're doing because they're sending money back home. They're helping their parents. They're building a house or something and things like that. So they look at that as example. They look at people like that as example. So I think. One, the government need to put a stop to this. And two, uh, by monitoring the areas to make sure that uh, there's the real enforcement, proper enforcement by the army or so, or, or, or National Guard to protect our people or youth from going through again. 
And two, um, like Bamara said, this is not something that could be fixed overnight, but it's got to stop somewhere. So stopping the, the travel is one. Two, sensitizing by bringing the ones that are affect, affected big time, the ones that have gone through and experienced this and, and still alive. Put them on national television every week. Pick a day of the week, whether it's every Tuesday, 8 o'clock in the evening, or every Thursday, 8 o'clock in the evening, whatever day it is, put it on television and get the people with the experience that really know about this, that have gone through it and they encounter what's in there and have them narrate stories. Talk to them, interview, and, and have them tell you what's all involved. So when people start to watch all of this and know what is happening, it's going to discourage a lot of people. Uh, at least it will discourage some people from going. There are people that are going to say, oh, no, I'm not going to. That, that means, you know, you mean uh, for people to speak their, their experience, like uh, the bad experience. Exactly. The yeah. bad experience and those who have seen exactly what happened and know exactly what happened. And all the risk involved in this because there's a lot of risk to this uh, compared to the reward that they get out of it. So if they have people that can come on television every week, have a story about the back way. Bring people that took the back way, that experience it, and, and have them talk about all the difficulties involved. People that have seen the other people die in front of them and they picked them and threw them in the water. They need to say all of this. They get, they, they, they need to say all the things about all the risk involved. In it. And, and also when they get there, the ones that got to the destination, how long did they take them to do something, to get something? Let, them, let the general public know that. You don't just get there and go get a job. You don't. You don't even know where you're going. So you go into, they go into shelters, you know, in these shelters, uh, that's where they stay and uh, depend on that government to help them and things like that. So some could be sitting there for but, years. But, 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 but did you hear what he said about mm -hmm. the notion of they saying that what the white people took away from us, that's what we're going to go get. Right, well, well, I know. And, well, and, then, and, and then either we, we know that we can die but yep. we'd rather die there than right, right. Uh, I, un I understand that, yes. So that's you a see, very powerful, those are very powerful It's, a, it's, it's a very powerful that. method of thinking, uh, but at the same time, if you have someone that has a live experience that also go on the other side, on the flip side, and tell all the risk involved in this, it's going to destroy something. So like I said, there are certain things that need to take place. One, having the government stop it first, put enforcement on the seaside, like the, from, uh, I would say, from from Burfoot, Tangier to Jiren Sanya, all the way to Khartoum, uh, stop that area and anywhere, anywhere that's a port of entry, you know, in other words, enforce, put enforcement at every port of entry, okay, and, and departure. Did, did you also hear what he said? Um, the military About the officers. army, the, yeah, military, yeah, so yeah, people yeah, that right. you put in position to work, right. I even believe in that. <laughs> Right, they because, gonna die in this right because the door is still open. Here. Yeah, because so this, the is door is, this is serious uh, issue. It is. It is very serious, and I feel sad for. And, and uh, we all joined the mourning of the people that we lost in this. It's very, very sad. That's why we're talking about this to discourage people from going because we don't want to lose any more people. And like the informer said, all of these people that we've lost it could have been husbands and fathers for children in Gambia and women in. So it's, it's, a it is a tragedy, and it's something that, that's why I said, there should first come to a stop. The reason uh, some of these, uh, he said, a couple of uh, shoulders also uh, uh, joined the trip, but well, they joined them because the door is still open. If you close the door, nobody can get out. Whether you're a soldier from the state out or a soldier from the barracks, if the door is closed, it's closed, and nobody can go. So if they stop that, do the sensitizing on television every week. But then the government now takes their other responsibility of what can they do to create uh, an environment that will encourage the youth to stay. And some of those, I gave some of those solutions in the past, you know, uh, different WhatsApp audios and different uh, times that we talked to. I've said different things. For example, the Jaha Pacha project alone can really make people think their mind. Uh, number two, getting into having the government start this from school level. Got to go to ground level, from school level, educating people and then understanding that uh, after high school, open up the doors to join the army, and give them that free education at the army. Let them go learn all these skills, carpentry, masonry, electrician, plumbing, roofing. I mean, you name it, painting. 
uh, they can do all of the flooring. They they let them learn all of these in the army. When they learn them in the army while they're there getting free education, they come out with at least an associate degree. Then the government help them uh, get sponsorships. Some will be employed by the government and not everybody can be employed by the government. But some can be employed by other uh, uh, um, uh, institutions. But uh, for the most part, the rest of them will go to the banks and get loans and open their own business because now they know how to do this. Now they know how to tile a whole house. Some will know how to put a roof on a, on a house how, um, ineffectively. And some will know how to do painting, how, how to do construction and things like that. They will know all this. And all of these will come with a, a, a good, uh, of course, when you get those, governments should also turn around by encouraging them. Turn around and give them government contracts. Give them government contracts instead of giving it to foreigners. Give it to them. Let them do it. Make sure they do it right. And of course, if they get training, they will do it right. Uh, that will be a motivation to create job employment. But the other part is, yes, salary is very low. And I've spoken about this years ago, a couple of years ago, and I continue to talk about this. That's why I made a proposal for, uh, for a comprehensive civil service reform. And in that comprehensive civil service reform, has salary increase in there. Pay increase for people. People need a which also creates a minimum wage in Gambia. And I remember I said a minimum wage should be at least, they should start somewhere. And, and you know, like I always say also, I'll, I'll say this so that people don't uh, think that I'm jumping uh, numbers out of my mind. You no, know, everything I say, I always say to the government. I, say, I always say this to everyone. Everything is planned. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So you got to plan from the beginning and get everything that needs to be involved in. Sit down, analyze, do everything, do a survey, understand what needs to happen to be able to do a salary increase and set a minimum wage with the National Assembly. That would be at least uh, $10,000 per month for the minimum wage uh, in the Gambia. If they set a minimum wage in the Gambia, and as part of their analysis, they're going to look at, okay, if we're going to set a minimum wage, of course, who is the lowest per person? Maybe that person is two thousand. He's making two thousand. How can we move this person from two thousand dollars a month or three thousand a month to a ten thousand? What is the percentage? Give the same percentage to the rest of the people that are above the ten thousand, so that you are giving the equal pay increase to every single person. Move them up. When they do that, uh, now it's going to be a little bit more attractive for them to stay. So someone that was used to receiving three thousand a month now all of a sudden they're receiving ten thousand. Uh, that person may not quickly change their mind to go overseas because they are coming from a three thousand dollars payment a month now ten thousand they will know that there is a lot they can do with that now. But the other point is, before the government can do all this and while they're doing all this, they've got to stop corruption. If they don't stop corruption, they're not going to be afford that. They're not going to be able to afford that minimum wage because the funds are not going to be there to pay people. If uh, they are allowing people to embezzle our funds and, and use them individually, and, and, and then nothing has been done about it. I mean, for how many years since we had change of government? How many years now? And how many times have we heard that somebody uh, audit reports so, so and so, millions lost in so and so place? But how many times have we heard that someone in that area has been arrested and prosecuted? How many times have we recollected that money? You know, how many times have we had the rest of the season and things like that? So things like that are not happening. And if they're not happening, it's going to make it difficult for government to raise right. pay scales. It's going, to make it, it's going to make it very difficult because if they close all those loopholes, trust me, Gambia has a lot of money. We have the resources. We have uh, everything that we need. We just have the wrong people in the wrong places. That's costing all of us this. So if we can fix that, and unfortunately, there's not very many people that know how. And if the know how is not there, they're not going to fix it. So, right. so Gambian people need to know all of this. They need to know all this so that every single person can make the decision at home when it's time for elections. If you put a government in place that don't know how, and your life is not getting mm -hmm. better, because the government's job is yeah. to make people's lives better. Your right. lives are not getting better. Do not be fooled. Don't be by any single person to change your mind. Just vote and give it to somebody else. Let them try. And we watch that government and see five years, the first five years, what have they done? If they have done things for the country, not for individuals or not for individuals in their party, 
then you know that government is making a difference. You Thank allow you. them to vote, to vote for them a second time for Donald Trump. If not, give your vote to somebody. At some point, we will get the right people that will come with the right mindset, with the knowledge and the experience to make the change. And they will make the permanent change that's going to stop the corruption in our country so we can save all of our youths. Because if Thank we stop corruption me... and save the money, yeah. we can do a lot for our youths. Yeah. Thank you, Sam, 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 for that. Let me um comment before Mfamara comes in. Because the debate here is what is the root cause and how do we fix it? You have given a lot of proposal when it comes to the government side. I agree. This government doesn't have what it takes to fix our problems. When it comes to job creation, creating incentives, creating training schools, uh, skilled schools, they don't have a plan. They are failed government when it comes to those kind of things. That's a fact. However, this the government of the Gambia has been failing since independence. Let's go back to Jawara's time, Jammer's time. There hasn't been much job created for the youths. The Gambian populace haven't enjoyed this skilled jobs or any form of jobs even since independence. So job issue has always been there. But let me ask you, during 1970s and years before after that, even in the 80s, have you seen an influx of illegal immigra immigration? No. Have, no. You seen, have you seen people forcing themselves and saying, I either go or die, I die in the sea, or die here, or rather than to die here. No, something changed in our community. Something changed in our, you know, in our, 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 you know, in our society. And the yep. changes is not only within the youth, but with our elders. Those elders who were those years in the eighties, because I've been around. Okay, since in the seventies to eighties, no, I'm not that old, but I've been around. But those elders then, who were older than me, they were not materially minded then. I, I was with them when I was growing up. Some of them, they were not materialistic minded as they are today. Today, our society has changed. Instead of the love, the family, the contention of what we have, the agriculture, Cultivate and eat what you cultivate. Those mindsets are gone. Everybody is thinking about Western life. Even the people in the village today. Nobody want to sleep in a hut. If you don't have a cement, a cement house, it's an issue. Competition. Everything has changed in our community. We forget, we throw the dean. The dean is just in the mouth. The faith that we have about the Almighty Allah is in the mouth, most of us. Because back then, then we had that. We had the Dean Allah Santa Ali Menke, you know, we do no muta gonna life enjoy. But today that's not happening. Today, what does Sam has? For Sam Le Bafu doesn't bad. This is the notion there is this change in our community that creates this. And People in business are taking advantage. People who are operating this back ways and illegal immigration, they're making money. It's a business. They connect with different areas and they are making money in the expenses of this brainwashing concept that has developed in our community. This is the fact. If we do a research on this, we will find that there is an imbalance, mental imbalance in the minds of our people. It's like mental slavery. It's like an operation where you cannot make it here. You must go to the West. And if you talk, they say you are already there. But we didn't come back way. In fact, we had the luxury to come and to come to education. Otherwise, we would not have moved an inch. 
if that education could be acquired in the country, you wouldn't have moved an inch during the 1990s, early 1990s. So today, when you talk to these people, they will tell you, you are there because. No, the situation meet us here. I can understand Jamet's time when people have been detained, killed, prosecuted. They had no choice to, to they can fly. They, can, they, they had to flee. They had to uh, leave the country. But who can complain now that they have been threatened? They have been prosecuted. No, since since we say New Gambia, things have changed. We have to be honest, and we have to give credit where credit is due. So far, this government has really done a good job trying to make sure that those rights are not at least suppressed. We haven't had people fleeing because of prosecution. No, it's not happening. So what is the point? But the situation is getting worse. People are now going even worse than Jamais time. And we call that government problem. We call that, you know, job problem. No. It's not that only. I understand. But this youth, even if you give them that work, you know what they will say? Okoro Mansia. They left the Bimale Bimale Borandila. Left the, you know, Mr. Bisu. Left the Nina Minakel. Left the Bunjaola. For you might carry him in law. Something wrong somewhere. We have to think. And if we don't fix it as a society, we're going to keep failing and losing our children. And I understand, you know, whatever, whatever. Those elders there, they are having a problem. We have to call it spade, spade. Today, if you are a drug dealer, you come and sell them money, they will give their daughters to you, they will crawl on the floor for you, and they don't care where you get that money. And they, they will take that money and take, go to makeup. Just because they want to see makeup. So our society is corrupt, not from the government sense, sense from the society, from the from the from the traditional point of view. We are so corrupt when it comes to material. And if we are not going back to Allah and forget about this material business, I'm not saying don't work, educate, and help yourself. But if we don't go back to Allah and go back to family, we will be doomed. Not only, you know, traveling to the West, but as a family and society as a whole, either here in the Gambia or abroad. If we don't change this mindset and work hard at our capacity and provide Ill illegally what, we, what, what belongs to us, we will be doomed. And if we think that the white people stole from us, we have to go and get it. That notion is, is not smart. Let me tell you something. Why people might come to, uh, to, to, the, to, 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 to Africa and take the goals and slavery, but that alone didn't make them make it. The West. The West, we are not lazy. They create, they use their brain with the little they have or what they have taken and make something out of it. Look at how people work in this country. How, how, how they pay people. How they work, how they, how they, even people call bosses, CEO, look at how they operate, if you understand. And lastly, desensitization is lacking. I agree with Sam. We need to, people to come out and talk about this. That is very, very important. National TV express their, express their uh, frustration, their experiences, so people can learn. And people should write about these things. I'm volunteer. I'm gonna be my, even myself be the one to volunteer and write something about this moving forward. People should write, and people should talk about the secret of the West traveling to the West. And and again, those who are doing the trafficking, there should be a crackdown. Like somebody uh, off the camera, this guy mentioned somebody whom we know, politician who is part of this crack who is part of these scandals, those kind of people should be put to jail. They as they are they on the in the expenses our of our youth, they are spearheading this effort 
for them to go through back way and they call themselves politicians, they call themselves, you know, leaders, they should be locked up because they are using our 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 children in their own expenses to make money. So with that, I'll let Mfamara comes and then Sam, you can come. But our the root cause here is uh, you know is us as a community, a society, and from there the government, of course, we all know their issue. And that but that has been going on. The government has been lacking employment since Jaura's time. But we never see people going as crazy as it is now. So if Jamba's time people flee, I can understand. Half of them might be political reason, but they are not secure. Thank you. Um Mpamara, you can come. Thank you, thank you, Sam. Thank you, uh, Savane. Um, absolutely, I agree with you with this agents issue. Uh, we need to crack down on them, seriously. Because what they are doing is completely greed. You know, it's completely, you know, selfish interest. All they interested in is, is money, how to make money. They don't care about the lives of the young people that we are losing. In fact, in, they pretend that they are helping you know, to transport people out of the country so they can become somebody or they can make money. But they are actually, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, killing our kids. They are killing our people. And they should be cut down and locked up because they are killing, you know, honestly. Oh, okay. But like you said also, this is mainly within us in our society. People are not honest anymore. People don't want to work anymore. All we depend on is money. All we trust on is money. Who has money in our community? Money has created division in our families, in our society, in our cabulous, in our country. Even those who are stealing from the government, we all know that whatever they are doing, their salary is not equivalent to what they do in our community. Some of them have even never traveled, but because they have opportunities serving our government system, they are being corrupt. These are the people that we praise in our community as true sons and daughters of our land, where we all know that definitely all they do is corruption. They are killing, they are eating our money. They are, they are, they, like Sam said, this is corruption. You understand? So this has created a lot of, um, you know, um, division in our community. People envy each other too much. People want to be like other people, even though they are getting their money in a legal means, whether selling drugs or whether corruption or stealing. These are the people that we celebrate. So I think, um, you know, it's time that we, we crack on this business. It has to stop. It has, we cannot stop it, honestly. Like some people say, it cannot be stopped, but we can reduce it. We can have to reduce it now because the life we are losing is just too much. And we cannot just ignore it. We have to do something about it, honestly. Yeah, but it's all about our community. If we, need, we can do it a lot in our community, then the government also play our part then hopefully we'll succeed into all this situation. But the way things are now, it's just getting out of hand. And it's better we start doing something about it, honestly. We start something about it, you know, because um, it's so sad. It's so sad, so the young people, uh, some of these kids uh, drop out of school. Some of them have already started to grade 12. You know, they, are, they have no opportunity in their country anymore. And most of us, like we heard from Mustafa, some of them are even serving, you know, security men. They are serving in the system already. But because they have no hope, you know, um, they only depend on their salary and the salary is not giving them much, you know, and they're seeing what other people are. If you are in the service, all they pray for is to go for a peacekeeping mission. Because at least if you go for a peacekeeping mission once in every five years, you had an opportunity. At least when you come, you change your mind. You, you change your living standard of your family and your conditions. So these are the situation that people don't have access to and then their job opportunity is very less, you know, and then people want to venture on this um, illegal journey. But it's, it, it is high time we, we, we stop about it and it, it needs a public sensitization. By now, you know, the national TV and all the national platforms should be talking about this. We should be sensitizing. The police and the alcalos and the community leaders should be sensitizing, doing sensitization in our community. And some of us who are in diaspora as well, if a family member contacts you, wants to go on this illegal journey, don't support them. Don't send them money. That's the best thing you can do. Because when you support them, you are also contributing part of the problem. Yeah, you are also contributing part of it. Because some of them, 
have money, but some of them don't have nothing because they ask money from their family members. And even our mothers, uh, some of them are even ready to sell their land or their cows or whatever wealth they might have just to give it to their son because they have seen, you know, either their co-wife's son has gone out of the country and doing something within the farm, the same family I mean. You can have two wives, maybe the first wife kids have traveled and they are doing a lot. You've been the second wife, you have grown up sons as well, and they are not as lucky as the other ones in terms of travel opportunities. But this other one is willing to give money to his other sons to go out so that he can also, she can also be in a better uh, standard of living like the other one. So it's all complicated. And the underlying causes are very, very, you know, difficult to deal with at this material time, at this um, short period of time. But with time, with sensitization and with government's commitment. And then the European Union is ready to help the government of the Gambia when government come with a proper plan how to deal with this situation. They will, they will support because you know what now Europeans are doing? They are now supporting the, the North African countries, the Algeria, the Tunis, the uh, Libya and others, because they know that here, our countries, our government is failing because they are not stopping it. And then when the little money that they are giving us, we are not utilizing the way we should. So now they're empowering those North African countries. They buy them vehicles, give them boats, give them money. So when our people come, they put them on asylum camps, you know, and they send them back. Or they intentionally, because we had even sometimes, they intentionally try to capsize their boat by shooting at the boat or even deflating the boat. You know, when you're traveling from Libya, some of these boats that they are doing is this in, uh, inflatable boats that they are traveling with. So once you bust that boat, and these people, they don't have any life jacket on them. Some of them have never swim before. Obviously, they will die. So the North, America, the North Africans are now getting much of the European support to stop it. Because the Europeans are also feeling the crunch now. Because now when these people arrive at the asylum camps, they have no option. According to international you know, conventions you know, on migration, they have to look after them. And they're spending a lot of money you know, running these asylum camps in, in Europe. You know, because you have to feed them, you have to clothe them, you have to give them pocket money, no matter how small it is. So the Europeans are also, you know, feeling the crunch. So now all what they're doing is to give money to North American, North African people. So I think our government needs commitment. And we need to show that commitment. And then, you know, once people have confidence in what government is trying to do, job opportunities, then obviously, hopefully we can deal with the situation. But right now, all we can do as an immediate action is to talk to ourselves in our community because the problem emanates from our community. That's why it all starts. You know, we crack on the agents, but also sensitize our family men. Not that we know Gambia is not easy. There is no job opportunity. But once you lose your life, your dream is shattered. Your dream is gone. You cannot, you cannot do anything at all because you are not alive anymore. You know? Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, Mfamara. And thank you for connecting us with, uh, with Mustafa Mane. Um, Sam. Your final words on this. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, final words again. Pamela, thank you also. Yeah, thank you so much for all the stuff that you just said. Uh, really very, very, very important. Um, and, and Mr. Swan as well. So, you know, what I want to end up is, you know, we know the root cause. What is the solution? Now, if we know the root cause, can you guys hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you, yeah. Okay. You, see, okay. you see it's frozen a little bit, but you're back. Yeah, my screen is frozen for some reason. I'm seeing myself frozen. That's why <laughs> I can't hear me. Yeah, if you notice yourself frozen, then that means <laughs> yeah, that, that frozen. Means something happened. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I was looking at that. So, yeah, but, but your yeah. voice, we can hear your voice and your, your, you your, voice. your face okay. is also so slowly, that, that's, so that's good. Yeah, that's that's the most important thing. If you can hear what I'm saying, that's the most important thing. Yeah. Not yeah. my face. So, but, uh, yeah. Your face so, is also there. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not That's too good. brown, but it's there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so but anyway, what I want to say is uh, uh we know the root cause. The root cause is people can't live on what they have now. People are frustrated, they don't have jobs, they can cost of living is high. That's the bottom line. Cost of living is high. And and the reason I I want to go back to what Suana said. Uh sometimes, you know, at, during the artist government, government, government coming to now, why now? But why do we have more of this now compared to terrorist regime? 
Well, there are reasons for it. Uh, Jaura's regime, maybe people didn't know about that way. But two, Jaura's regime, if I have $10 in my pocket, I can go buy my bread and butter and buy uh, a lot of stuff out of that house, right? You can buy a can of uh, sardines out of there, corned beef, and you can make your breakfast out of ten dollars. Today you can't. Why? Because of the inflation. The inflation is so high, cost of living goes high, which does not match with the people's salary. So people that are there, so they already believe and they already know that no matter what you do, no matter how much you talk to them, they just cannot live on what they have, what they are currently receiving as salary. They cannot live on that. So they want to find alternatives. They want to have other means that they can make more money. And one of those ways is that this backward travel that just started, that started a couple of years ago, uh, that they know that people are going through. They know there's some risk associated. They know that, but the ones that made it through are turning around, making a difference in their society or in their homes. So this is why. So to be able to stop this, we need to do something. Yes, what you both talked about is very important in, in terms of what needs to happen at home level. Our parents, we need to discourage our kids. We need to encourage this. We need to do all of that. Sensitization, like I said from the beginning, the government need to put a program on television that will be aired on TV every week, once a week. They put the program in there, let the youth sit while they're drinking attire and watch that. Let the parents, especially that are in the house, uh, watch all of that and be able to discourage their kids from doing too, because no parent, no parent would want to see their child die in the, in the water. Uh, so I don't think any parent wants to see that, no matter how much they can do for you once they get there, but they don't want to take the risk. If they know all the risk associated. So that will be a, a thing of uh, the government to come out and censor that would be one thing they can do. Get it on television, make it consistently every week, a consistent program that airs every week. Bring different people and bring the experts, bring the ones that experience it as well. That interview people that went through it and let them tell you what they went through, uh, all the all the all the, the, the risk associated with it. This way, number one, you are sensitizing. But number two, the government need to look at the way of increasing people's pay because people cannot live on this. Even if we discourage as much as we can all get on television, even if they get the three of us, yeah, Mrs. Sawani and Famora and myself, all on Gambia television, we can talk as much as we want to talk. People are going to listen. Maybe a small percentage of people will be discouraged not to go. But at the end of the day, they're going to say, well, we don't want to go, but we don't have any money. How can we live? We cannot live on this small salary. So what else do we do? What do we have if the government doesn't do anything? Yes, government cannot be the, the, the largest employer in any community uh, or in any country, uh, but government creates the avenues for uh, uh, investors to come and invest, make it easier for them to come and invest so they can create employment. However, in the Gambia, we have the natural resources to be able to uh, really create a lot of employment opportunity for our youth. You know, like at the Jack Upper Set, I'll keep saying this, the Jack Upper Child Project is a huge opportunity for us. Fisheries Department, is a huge opportunity. We can have all youths going through, you know, government can buy fishing trawlers. I mean, think about the millions and millions and millions of uh, uh, funds that were lost in uh, from audit reports, what they showed them. All of those millions, if you take that, if they had able, if they were able to uh, uh, recover all of those millions, I can guarantee you they can buy 20 different fishing trawlers and put them in our waters and give them to the youths. But but, but 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 um but did you hear the guy um Mustafa said fishing now is becoming an issue. These boats are there and there's no fish. Well, well, yeah, yeah. because that, that because uh, when you're doing that too, before like that, that's why I always say plan first before putting twenty fish and trawlers trawlers and put them in the river in our water with our years. You got to stop the Chinese country. You got to stop all this external uh uh uh. uh uh, uh, fishing trawlers. We've got to stop them all. Once we stop them and end their contract, then allow our youth to go in there. They will have the opportunity to be able to catch a lot of fish and be able to uh, uh, serve the Gambian population. So very, very, very important. There's a lot of work to do. Uh, 
uh, and unfortunately, uh, it's, it's very costly for our people and people want to be able to uh, get funds. They want to be able to support their families. And, and this is part of the problem. So um, I just want to say uh, um, it's, it's, it's very difficult for people to live in those conditions. Uh, we need to do something. And that something is uh, the government need to do their part. Parents do need to do their parts. And the youth need to understand uh, what are all the risks involved in this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Vamara. Thank you, Sam, for definitely digging into this. And thanks to our guest, uh, Mustafa Mane, for you know, uh, also in participating in this discussion. We learn a lot. Um, I didn't even know that um, there's a different, I mean, trial now, a fishing trial that, that goes to Europe because of lack of, um, you know, lack of um, work out there in the in the in the sea for them they're not making money um you know going fishing so they now now have to use, use alternatives not knowing that those fishing trawls are more dangerous than even the inflated plastic you know i mean plastic boats that folks takes uh in libya and other places so that isn't something new i'm pretty sure you guys also something new to you and um since we have this discussion that has been highlighted there. I hope our 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 viewers and people who's gonna view this will learn that later. That um this is what is happening in our region. There is uh this big um not even big as it is, according to Mustafa. And sometimes they told they, they will tell them that it's a new yeah. tool that that's that's guaranteed that they will they're gonna get get there. At the end of the day, what they realize is that water comes under those um or under those boards that are made of wood on the surface of them and then they end up sinking. So we're gonna definitely appeal to our viewers and then the families and our communities and the dictatorial government um, that, you know, this is something that there should be a crackdown on. People involve our own people. Without our own people, this, this, this opportunity will not be there. So let those be cracked down. And then um, like Sam said, corruption, let's fight corruption and make sure that the government create jobs. Um, I know, Job creation is an issue in the Gambia, but you know there is a lot of ways that the government can help. You know, especially uh, I mean, train train jobs, you know, uh, skilled jobs and so forth, and to encourage the youth. And then also our families. Let's try to get away in this notion of competition, materialistic life. Let's let's focus on God. Let's also know that we can. This life is to 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 to, to come and do your part you know, at your capacity and as a family to grow. It's not all about materialistic life. And then we cannot copy the West. We have to also embrace our culture. We have lived happily well before all this massive immigration and people have lived their life, you know, throughout without problems. So if we are seeing this, materialistic mindset is destroying our families. P people are not getting along anymore. Everybody, nobody cares. I mean, you can see it, we can feel it. It's not only in the, those of us who came from, you know, from, from, from back home, who are in the West, who are experiencing this, but people in, in the Gambia themselves, people don't care anymore. Their relationship there, that family, that love is gone. All because of this. You know, this mindset, materialistic mindset now, even the older people, like I said, who were older than me, who before never care about those things, today, they weigh that more. If you don't have anything, or if you are not, if you haven't traveled, you are nobody. And this is really the issue that we need to clean up. I mean, it's going to be a process, but sensitization and talking to souls like this would definitely help us, um, help us learn and probably things will change. But government alone cannot do it. We as collective forces will do it. Yeah, Mfamara, if you have anything before I, I, we end. Thank you so much. I have nothing to add. You know, thank you so much for dwelling, um, you know, extensive discussion on this matter. I think this is something we need to keep talking. Uh, and maybe we get a local, um, local language version as well so that our audience now, they are listening. So hopefully we can change one person who discourage somebody who is preparing to go. So maybe by listening to us, one person might change his mind. So thank you so much.
I know we don't have time for the second discussion, the second topic, but that's yeah, we can we can do that since that's a continuous yeah. process. But yeah. that's another but important. That, yeah, yeah, the demolition issue. I mean, I mean, it's heartbreaking. So I think let's look forward for next next week and dedicate that for that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I totally agree. I totally agree. So thank you all for this, and uh, we've come to the end, but. Uh, yeah, it's a great program. So thank you. I look forward to the next time. All right. Take care. Thank you, guys. Have a have the rest of the weekend. Wonderful weekend. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. All right.